Hi, this is Profiles for Pi TV Arts. I'm Leonora and we're here at the Slade School of Art at UCL to interview one of the BA students and artists, Ben Wesley Clark, about his work. I think the Slade has been amazing um, and is amazing. I think um, it gives you a context and it gives you a kind of peer group and it gives you um, a debate. And I've met so many people that are so interested in art at the Slade sort of thing, which is, um, which is brilliant really. And so many great artists. The business of producing art at the moment, because I'm doing an art degree, it's like everything I do is an experiment, and everything I do is a journey. And I haven't got, I haven't got like a production, I haven't got a formula. I probably will never have a formula. I'll try never to have a formula. Um, I try and make my work funny. Um, there's the one that's on the wall of the smoker, um, who. I think I think if he I think if that one had a title it would probably be something along the lines of Billy Laddie Tomkinson <laughs> or something like that um, like something yeah. really specific and your sketches um, are good to look at too and for he, their humor yeah and I suppose the the symbolism and the humor is like that he has this pipe but he's sm but he's smoking this pipe and then the smoke that's coming out of it is kind of almost looks like clouds so he could be like this weird sort of He's like an old fisherman, but he also could be like this weird sort of um, man that you would meet at um, a festival in, in like San Francisco in the 60s or something like that. The desire for my work to be funny comes out of the fact that I think that some of the work that comes out of the slate is kind of straight-faced right. and a bit too straight-faced. Um, but I think, having said that, I respect so many artists here and, I've, and I'm just trying to find out a way to make work that's my own really. There's this thing that has um, been developing since I've been at the Slade about rural, there have been rural themes coming up in my work and there's been uh, ideas about the relationship between um, the countryside and the city. Um, when I was born, I lived on a farmhouse in Nettlestead. Is that um, called? It's it's a little way out of uh, a little way out of Ipswich. It's about three quarters of an hour or half an hour's drive away from Ipswich. Right. A tiny, tiny village. Um, and I was born on this farmhouse called Wesley Green Farm, which is why my middle name's Wesley. <laughs> I got this from a charity shop in Ipswich, um, which is probably in a building. I think it's in. A, I think the, the charity shop that I got it from is a charity shop that's in a building that's kind of similar to those kind of old Tudor houses. There's so many of them around Ipswich, um, and I kind of uh, the reproductions in this are really good, and the colours are really great, um, and it's got a lot of. It's about Bruegel, but it's got a lot of uh, context about Flemish. Art at the time, so yeah, the Anonymous Bender Biden well. and Descent from the Cross. Um, You've marked the misanthrope actually. Ah, um, uh, yeah. Where is that? Um, Keep going. It's a bit further left, isn't it? There. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant that yeah. painting. I can see a lot of your work in that. I yeah. Think. Like a bit of the playfulness and also kind of that kind of gothic, something mysterious and dark, a figure, yeah. hidden face. But detail in the painting of the fisherman there is, yeah. there's quite a lot of it, it's quite a well-crafted thing, whereas others, I'm thinking of the one to your left, is more painterly, as we yeah. said, and then there are more abstract ones as well. Yeah. So you're incorporating quite a wide range of styles. But yeah. you think there's that unifying theme of the rural? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't really say I have a technique. Um, I wouldn't say I have any one technique, and it's, 
it goes back to what you were saying about teaching again. I always think, maybe it's because my parents are teachers, but I always think about education and, like, and how I've been taught and whether, to what extent that affects my work. And I, I've been taught by a huge number of teachers that have all said slightly different things. So I kind of paint using a composite of all those different kinds of knowledge. Um, That's it. I got taught how to use this palette. Um, yeah. And it was like, basically I was taught in New York by um, this painter called Graham Nixon. Um, he's an English painter. He's the dean of the New York Studio School. Um, and he was taught by, he was taught by you and Uglo, who used to teach at Camberwell and Slade um, a long time ago in the 50s and 60s. And he, Uglo was taught by Coldstream, um, and Coldstream, I think, was one of the heads of the Slade. But he basically developed this technique of um, oil painting, which um, is called sight size painting and drawing, which is like you measure exactly, you, you precisely measure what you're looking at, and then you transpose the exact measurement to the sheet of paper. Right. Um, so it's basically like a really rigorous, me measured way of painting sort of thing. Um, so Graham, my teacher in New York, is more interested in colour. Um, he's kind of, he knows a lot about colour. Um, I think he was in the same year as Albach, at, um, or I think he studied alongside Frank Albach for a while. But he's, but he taught me a lot, and he taught me how to use his palette, which is a palette of about 20 colours, or they're about slightly less than that, which I'm laying out now. I think in America, actually, there's probably more of a kind of system where you have to be, where somebody has to take you under their wing if you're, if you're going to hope to become successful. So I think right. a, lot of people, a lot of people go to Yale, and a lot of people go to the big sort of art schools in New York. Um, Whereas I, I suspect that the tradition in the UK is maybe more about like um, burning your idols and kind of getting rid of everything before you and tearing down everything that's gone before you kind of thing. And I think Do you have I think there's more. I think in American culture in general, I think there's more of a sense of continuity from generation to generation. Whereas I think that in British culture and British art and British popular music is more like let's let's destroy what's gone before us. Um, I spent a lot of time in the Met um, when I was there and I drew from um, paintings by Titian, um, paintings by Vermeer. And so not necessarily um, 20th century. I mean, I, t I kind of absorbed that stuff while I was there, I think. And, have a better understanding of it now. Not very well known painter called Albert Pinkham Ryder, um, who's a really amazing American artist. Yeah. Look at that. Is this straight from the Pinkham Ryder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And the, the original painting is only about that big, but he used to use really, really thick paint. Right. Um, and he used to do mad things with his paintings, like stick them in the oven. And, um, <laughs> he used to use like shoe polish and tar and stuff in his paintings, so they're really hard to restore. And some of them, some of them are kind of okay, like that. And they have this kind of, I mean, that still has a really cracked surface. But some of them, some of them there are surprised. photographs of from 50 years ago, um, and they you can identify everything in them. And right. now they're just like these crazy sort of abstract. Composition. I went to Florida. I got this. Um, I got this grant. Um, Graham Nixon, the dean of New York Studio School, gave me this grant um, and bought my tickets to Florida. And it was a It was a totally amazing week because I was in this small town called Naples, which is kind of like this quite rich retirement town. Um, where a lot of people from all over, especially from New York actually, like a lot of people from New York retire to Naples and to Florida in general. And um, so we stayed in this hotel <laughs> and it was this amazing day of, this, this amazing week of painting 
every single day from sort of 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. working on the big paintings like that, really ambitious. Well, I swam in the sea every morning, and um, there was a jacuzzi in our hotel, so it was like the ideal lifestyle, really, <laughs> like waking up and sort of doing literally exactly what you wanted to then. And then painting all day, and then yeah, it was Lovely. just beautiful. So has your style changed since you got back from America? Um, it's evolving again. I'm trying to work out, because I had access to models all the time in New York. Live models? Uh, yeah. Right. Um, I kind of developed a practice around that. And what I was doing before was working only from photographs. So I came on this journey where I was only working from photographs and collages and drawings from photographs and so on and so forth before I went to New York. And then while I was in New York, I kind of learned how to paint from life. Right. Um, and then now I'm kind of trying to put the two together, really, and try to come up with images using any way I can. But I feel like I've got that, I've got that ability to draw from life as a tool now, which I was always a little bit scared of before. I, ne I never believed that I could do it. But really, all you, all you really have to do is, is just do it. It's like, it's like what you're saying about teaching and do you have to be, do you have to, is it important who your teacher is? It, it is to an extent but ultimately you're the person who's doing the work and, you're, and it's, if, you, if you're talking about drawing it's like nobody can really teach you how to draw apart from yourself because all you have to do is train yourself because <laughs> you're the person actually do, you're the person actually making the marks sort of thing so um, you can't rely upon any anything anybody other than yourself. I think it's practice, yeah. I think yeah. anyone can teach themselves how to draw. Okay. They have to have the willpower to do it. I suppose I'm kind of interested in like um, things being tragic and comic at the same time, or things being kind of like um, I'm after a kind of like raucous humour, a fantasy, but one that comes from excruciating boredom about the real world or like something like that, you know? <laughs>